Weekly Athlete Spotlight, we're talking about some international athletes who didn't get the recognition that they truly do deserve for some amazing performances this past week. So let's jump into it. First off, we gotta talk about Jareem Richards from Trinidad and Tobago. In the 200 meters down in Trinidad at the Trinidad National Trials, he managed to run 19.83 seconds. This improves his personal best of 19.97 seconds, which he ran all the way back in 2017. This is also the second fastest time in the history of Trinidad and Tobago, only 600 of a second away from the national record of 19.77, set by none other than, of course, Otto Bolden, all the way back in 1997. This also puts Richards back in the conversation of the 200 meters. Also, the world, of course, is focused on Lyles and Knighton and Benaric and uh, Fred Curley, but we do have to put Richards back in that conversation. Remember, he got a bronze medal in the 200 back in 2017 at the World Championships. Of course, he's a world indoor champion at 400 this year. Clearly, he's been showing some significant progress. Keep a lookout for what he's going to be able to do when we get to Eugene later on in July. Now, moving over to Great Britain, we got to talk about Daryl Nita. I spoke about her recently when she ran 10.99 seconds behind Shelly and Fraser Price's um, 10.67. But at the UK National Championships, she ran some amazing windy performances. 100 meters, 10.92 seconds in the qualifying round, and then 10.80 seconds in the final. Again, these are windy times, plus 3.0 um, and 3.2 meters per second. So really, really windy. But this shows that she is really rolling and hitting on all cylinders. She actually beat Dina Asher Smith in the women's 100 meters. So this is showing that this is not just some fluke, not some one-off races. She ran 10.99, now she's running some windy fast times. I think Daryl Nita is going to be a force to be reckoned with when we get to the world championships. Again, I know the women's 100 meters is super, super stacked, but Nita is making a name for herself. She's definitely gonna be coming off um, the Olympics last year where she made the final, going into the world championships this year, definitely looking to get a spot in that final. So this is probably a confidence booster for her. Keep a look out for Nita as we progress and get closer to those championships. I'm gonna stick in the 100 meters and I have to talk about Mujika Kambunji from Switzerland. Also in the 100, she ran 10.89 seconds. This time it was legal at the Swiss National Championships. A personal best for her. This improves her personal best from 10.94 seconds. I think she is going to be one of the athletes that if you were to put your money on to break up, you know, probably the Jamaicans who might be able to sweep, I would put money on Kambunji to break up that sweep. She of course made the finals at the Olympics last year. She got sixth place in the Olympic final. 100 meters. She went on to win the World Indoor Championships this year in the 60 meter dash up in Belgrade. So, if again, I want to put some money on someone to break up, you know, a potential Jamaican sweep or, you know, who, who knows what, pick, I would pick Mujinga Kambunji just based on what I've been seeing right now. Again, there's a lot of ladies. Juanisha Terry from the United States, Aliyah Hobbs, Melissa Jefferson. I just spoke about, um, of course, Daryl Nita. Um, there's tons of ladies, but I think Mujika Kampunji is one of those ladies who is always a gamer, so we're gonna see what she does. Also in the 100 meters, Muriel Ahure from the Ivory Coast. Now, she is one of the veterans in the 100 and the 200 meters. Back in 2013, she got silver medals in both the 100 and the 200 at the Moscow World Championships. She, of course, is a world indoor champion at uh, 60 meters in 2018, and she has two world indoor silvers, but in the 100 meters, she ran 10.95 seconds down in Trinidad and Tobago. This also came after she ran a windy 10.92 seconds. The wind was only plus 2.1 on that 10.92. But the 10.95, that is a legal 100 meter time that she ran. This is her first time under 11 seconds since 2018. Ahure is really putting things together when it counts getting closer to these world championships. Also, this is actually her 10th fastest 100 meter time in her entire career. So for her to be kind of one of the veterans in the game and really turning it on now, I think this bodes very well. We might see what happens again. This 100 meters is stacked on the women's side. Let's keep a lookout for what Ahure is able to do in the mix with these other ladies. Still in the 100 meters, we have Kemba Nelson from Jamaica. Now, she is one of the top athletes that we've been seeing in the NCAA over the past couple years. She won NCAA indoors in the 60 meters all the way back in 2021. She finished second place at NCAA outdoors this year. But at the Jamaican National Championships, she ran 10.88 seconds for third place to qualify for her spot on the Jamaican national team in the 100 meters. That actually improves her personal best of 10.97 seconds, which she ran in the prelims of the NCAA Championships, well, the semifinals, right? Right before the finals. She probably gets a little bit overlooked though here because she was behind Sharika Jackson. She was behind Elaine Thompson. Of course, you know, Shelly Ann Fraser Price has the bye and she's been running 10 sixes like on command this year. But, uh, 
But Kemba Nelson ran sub 11 in every single round at the Jamaican National Championships. He ran 10-9-8, 10-9-8, and then capped it off with this 10-8-8. So combined with Sharika Jackson, Shelly and Fraser Price, Elaine Thompson, Kemba Nelson is going to be going to the World Championships with a strong potential to make the World Championship final. Who knows what happens from there? In addition, she's going to be on that four by one and we know Jamaica is dominating that four by one. So keep a lookout for Kemba Nelson in that women's 100 meters. Now let's jump back over to the men's, but still in the 100 meters, Favre Ache from Nigeria in the 100 at the Nigerian National Championships, 9.99 seconds. Now you might say that's a little bit slow for Ache, right? But he had run a windy time of 9.79 seconds, plus 3.0 meters per second back in April. This is his first time under 10 seconds. It's 9.99 seconds that he's run. This is a huge performance for him considering the season that he's been having. He ran the SEC Championships and won that. He got second place at the uh, NCAA's outdoors. He also got third place at NCAA indoors in the 60 meter dash. So for Ashe to be able to come here, run a sub 10 second uh, performance, now he's gonna be going to the World Championships, his first time at a major global senior championships. We're gonna see what Ashe is able to do, you know, fresh out the, you know, fresh out the NCAA. I think he's gonna have a great performance and who knows what happens from there. This is kind of just a new experience for him. Him, and I think he's going to be able to perform well. Keep a lookout for Ashe. Now, stepping things up, let's talk about Emmanuel Courier in the men's 400 meters. He managed to run 44.87 seconds at the Kenyan Trials. Now, that's not an amazing performance, right? There's a plethora of guys who have uh, run much faster than him in the 400 meters this year. But this shows that he's kind of getting back to his 2019, 2018 form. Remember, last year, he was also running the 400. He actually ran the 400 at the Tokyo Olympics. He kind of false started it out of the you know first heat. But regardless, he hadn't run 44 seconds all year. In 2019, he ran um, you know 44 seconds multiple times. He actually finished sixth place at the Doha World Championships in 2019. And then, of course, he ran his personal best in 2018 of 44.21 seconds. But this is, again, showing that he's getting back into that 400 meter form. He's, of course, the defending Olympic champion in the 800. He's also the Diamond League champion. So he has the buy. He's going to be competing in the 800 at the World Championships this year. I don't know if he's going to double. He doubled in Doha. He also doubled in Tokyo. Um, but we'll see what career is able to do. He does have a lot of potential if he runs the 400 to really mix things up. So keep a lookout for career in that men's 400 meters. But dropping things down a little bit, but going onto the hurdles this time, we're talking about Rafael Pereira from Brazil competing in that 110 meter hurdles. He ran 13.17 seconds at the Brazilian National Championships. This is a huge performance because it's not only a personal best, not only a national record, but it's also an area record. That's a South American record for the 110 meter hurdles, improving upon the previous record of 13.19 seconds. So amazing performance for him here. He's been consistently dropping his personal best all throughout the year. He actually entered the 2022 season running 13.35 seconds. So for him to get all the way down to 13.17, that ranks him number nine in the world this year. It's a little bit of a ways to go to potentially get a medal and get on that podium, but who knows, make that final he might be a spoiler. Keep a lookout for Pereira as we go through the season and get to those world championships. Now, still in the hurdles, but moving up to the 400 meter hurdles, we have Wilfred Hapio competes for France. At these national championships as well for France, he ran 48.57 seconds. That is a huge personal best for him. It drops his PB from 49.01 seconds pretty much over almost half a second drop in the 400 meter hurdles that ranks him number 13 in the world this year. So not in the top 10 or top five, but he's actually behind three Americans who are not going to be on the world championship team. So this bodes very well for him. If we're talking about he's in the top 10 fastest athletes going to world championships, who knows? He might be able to sneak onto the uh, into the final and we'll see where Hapio goes from there. So keep a lookout for him as we run into those 400 meter hurdles at the World Championships. So let's finish things off in the hurdles. From the Bahamas, we have Devin Charlton. She competed in the 100 meter hurdles and ran a personal best of 12.60 seconds at the Bahamian National Championships. That slightly improves her personal best of 12.61, which she ran earlier this year as well as last year, but it makes her number 15 in the world. Guess what? a plethora of names ahead of her are not going to the world championships. There's so many Americans who are actually ahead of her that won't be in Eugene. So that significantly improves her spot and it gives her a good chance to make the world championship final. She actually got a silver medal in the 60 meter hurdles indoors at the world indoor championships. So she knows what it takes to compete at the highest level, to win a medal at the highest level. So I think she's gonna be very comfortable when we get to Eugene in just a couple weeks time. Keep a lookout for Charlton in those 100 meter hurdles. Let's finish things off with Sarah Guy 
Gallego from Spain in the 400 meter hurdles. Personal best here of 54.35 seconds. Improves her personal best by half a second. She had run 54.87 seconds earlier in the year. Entering 2022, she had actually run 55.20 seconds, so making significant improvement in strides. Now, you may say that this is not too fast. This actually makes her number 12 in the world this year, but there's a few Americans and Jamaicans who actually won't be going to the world championships, right? We could only send a couple. The US already has uh, four women who are going to the world championships. I think Anna Cockrell is ahead of her, and she unfortunately won't be going, but Gallego really cementing herself and putting herself in a good position to make the world championship final and who knows from there. We're potentially gonna see her run a very fast time, maybe get down into those 53s. So keep a lookout for Gallego in those 400 meter hurdles. Keep a lookout for a lot of these people that I mentioned. Again, these aren't the top, top names, but these are some people who are on the cusp, really do need some recognition as they might be spoilers to get into the final or even get onto the medal podium when we're talking about some of their events in Eugene. So go in the comments below. Let me know who are some of the athletes that you were really looking out for this past weekend, kind of internationally. Uh, go check out the previous videos that I just did about the USA Championships and some of the athletes I highlighted from there. Just put those videos up earlier this week. But make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.